week four, part four. Oh, wait, no. It's week three. <laughs> Session three. Oh, episode three. Oh, I screwed that one up. Oh, I was trying so to be too close. funny. Anyway, it's part four. Welcome back. Um, we find the band of party members at the general store, haggling over the price of some wooden boards and some nails. What could they possibly be planning? Well, their purse strings slightly heavier, and then Zhao, um, Zhao Di's face slightly dropped. They set out from the general store. It's, um, what, the, the third two-hour portion of the day? There's only about a couple hours left of walking, so do you want to, like, stop and rest up at Haven? Maybe spend the night at the last hope, buy a couple of rounds, regale the patrons that are probably coming in right now with your epic tale of walking? Or are you just going to head out and sleep in the fields? I think we we live, we live by in the good, good enough in the fields. No need to stop here. Yeah, if we have so started hope, something, let's... How many travel actions do we have left? Two, um, right? You have one, uh, one. for the next uh, okay. period. But you can rest at Haven and reset the three-day period. If you stay at the last hope, you basically start a new day three period because you've... Oh. Well, you, it's basically the save screen, if you will. We could rest and let the fog disappear, but I don't mind the fog, honestly. Doesn't bother me. Um, but staying would, you know... If even we as players don't need the rest, maybe our characters wouldn't mind a know. drink and a warm bed, maybe a bit of a wash. How much would it be to stay in the inn? Uh, it's it's free. Um, oh, okay. Like it would be some amount of money, but it doesn't matter. We're we're look it's, it's we're even. regulars in the tavern, I guess. Well, this is uh, this is this is like this session is the first time you've been in Haven <laughs> proper. Uh, which is a bit weird, considering you've already said that uh, you've been here before and everyone's friends with you, Rickest. But shh, shh, shh. So, um, do you, you head to the last hope, or are you setting out? So let's let's, let's rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's reset. Yeah, let's um, rest. No harm. Okay. Sure. So, can you roll a, a d hundred, uh, please? Um, while I go. All right. D hundred. Okay, so you, you head to the, the last hope, you funnel in, you have a couple of ales, you knock them back, you have some mead, you spend a couple of coins here and there, but nothing that will matter to any of you, brave adventurers. You rest a night in a warm bed with a hot meal in your belly, water on your back and a scrubby brush under the armpits, and in the morning you set out your, your mail sparkling, probably not, I don't know. It's up to you. Do you polish your armor? And you set out the following day. The weather is much improved. The fog is gone. And once again, the sun shines brightly. Blue clouds everywhere. Who's who's leading the party? Are you trying to make good time with your with your uh, wooden board? And one of you is going to be having to carry this. So are two of you carrying this thing between them? Or is one of you carrying it all by his lonesome? It's not particularly heavy. It's just a bit awkward. I guess two people would carry it, but I'm a dwarf. I'm a little small, so I wouldn't be actually. Andy can. Andy's pretty tall, and sturdy. Okay, so so Andy, you grab one end of this this construction, and um... sure, Cressic, Cressic could grab grab the other. Then I'll okay. lead with athletics, I guess. Cool. So go, go for, for it. it. All right. Roll up Roll. that athletics while I go. Rakust. Uh, the Dwarven Brethren Latics. clenches his cheeks and That's sets forth with a 12. Oh, uh, what the... What, what oh, that performance? Well, you rolled an 11. What's your athletics mod? It's uh, strength... No. Uh, yeah, it, it's plus 3. Okay, so that's a 14. It's, it's the same deal. So it's 2. Um, you have 2 travel actions to spend in the next 3 days. So venture forth boldly. I'm just going to try and roll again and see if I pressed the wrong button. Okay, I pressed the wrong button. Cool. Okay. So, um, you, you set forth? You two travel um, um, okay, cool. so it's... Wait, wrong, wrong tool. Um, are, are you using the, the fast travel? Yeah, yeah, we're going to quick and pace. So, cool. we yep. went to oh, top. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, Get rid of the fog. Doop. Doop. Uh, let's try it. There we go. Boop. Ah, yes, it's a bright and sunny day. 
Um, so yeah, you head north to Hexes. Nothing occurs. Yeah. You can still see the the ruined farmstead off to the northeast. It's all very quiet and pleasant. Nothing, right. nothing wrong here. So, two, two, another two hexes. Roll a d hundred while they go. You pass by the ruined farmstead, and no, no horrors block your path. Everything's all fine, hunky and dory. Keep on going. All right, uh, a couple of days north, right? Yeah, okay. So another two. <gasps> And okay. northeast. Now we start going north. Uh, and everything's fine. Keep on going. Right. Two, two. And everything is looking good. Uh, the sun begins to draw to a close. Roll a d hundred. We're gonna camp soon. Cool. And you set up camp. All right. Everything's good. Okay. You're setting up camp. Roll a d hundred. You set up camp, you roll out your bedrolls, you lie underneath the fresh moon, and everything looks fine. Nothing's the slightest bit the problem. It's all very sedate and boring. You could swear that someone else has already come this way and killed everything that could possibly interfere with you. Or maybe, maybe everything's just too scared. They hear you a mile away and just run for the bushes. But whatever it is, the sun rises. Alright. So we're heading... East now, right? So, more two, two more moves. Okay, so, um, what's that? 18 and 14? Uh, four, yeah, okay. I came from here. Okay, could you roll um, a d100, please, uh, Andy, Andromeda, uh, Scar? And one more. Okay. And, yep, it's all fine. It's all hunky-dory. Nothing nothing strange is happening. The Uden Plains are nice and flat. Uh, continue moving. All right. Uh, please, one, one hex at a time, just so I can, like, track. Oh, okay, sorry. But, like, so if I say, yep, just carry on. Yep. Yep. So you can once again see the cracked hill to the northeast. It's all very mundane and plain. Um, could you roll a d100, uh, please, uh, Warlaco? Okay. Yep. It's all, it's all fine. No, nothing to see here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's Who headphones. would want to mess you with us? Yourself. Yep. Oh. And uh, you quickly find yourself back at the cavern. What could these brave adventurers be up to? They've got some wood. They've got some nails. And now they're heading back to the place of foul death and vinegar. What adventures await them? We shall find it's out! Salads! <laughs> oh god, that's, yes, salad. It's all about the salad. Okay, so... You, you find yourself back at the cave, I mean, you, you get there, nothing's changed, it's, it's all the same. The grass is blackened around it, you can see the cracked hill extending into this cave system. You lower rope down once again? Yes, I do. Another round of athletics with advantage from everybody? Um, you've spent both your travel actions, haven't you? I was about to say you could uh, use the uh, athletics action to, like, oh, speak. Uh, yeah, I think you used advantage them. advantage from the rope, so there's no worries. So yeah, all just right. athletics from all of you. Does carrying the board... Um, I'm assuming that one of you goes down, you lower the board down, maybe on another rope. It, I mean, or you could just toss it down and hope it doesn't break, but it doesn't hinder you anyway. Um, Rakus, you're fine. Lynn, easy peasy. Scarlet, not a problem. Kresik, I mean, haven't you done this like twice already? Yeah, it's yeah. simple. You grab the rope, plant your feet, climb on down. Only a imbecile would die to a, a cliff. So you find yourself once again in the small cavern, the rope kind of flopping into it, the stalactites hang from the ceiling, you are greeted by this this wonderful wonderful little cavern complex. Uh, it's the same nothing as you lurking around nothing in the in any I I kinda wanna inspect everything to see if everything is the same. Cool. Make uh, sure you, nothing changed. Could you uh please roll a perception test? Perception. Okay, so looking around, 
doesn't seem like anything's changed. Seems very quiet, very peaceful, very sedate. Nothing, nothing untoward. It all seems rather dull, boring. <laughs> Apart from the overpowering stench of stale <laughs> wine, this vinegary oh. olfactory assault, you're fine. Okay. And you smell mm, lovely fresh from your wash at the last hope. Mm, is that lavender? <laughs> Nothing's the matter. No trap here. All right, oh. let's proceed then towards the cliff. Okay, so do we see the adventurer's plan spring into uh, action <coughs> as you round the corner and come once again to this ten foot across chasm? You happen to have a couple of boards bolted together with nail and rope. It's easily fifteen foot. What do you do? Okay, so I think I'm going to cross first, guys. Make sure it's sturdy. Do you put the board down? Oh, uh, we haven't placed it yet? Yeah, no, we're, no, we're no. putting it down. I was, I was leading into, oh, what's sorry. your plan? Oh, okay. is, your, is your plan to, 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 to do this? Yeah. Oh, okay. We just sling the boards across. You know, I think as we, like, because I assume both Andy and Kresik put them down because we were carrying it. Kresik like pushes his hand on it to make sure it doesn't like bounce or anything, just to make sure it's sturdy. And it's, when it's he's... quite sturdy and quite stable. Yep. Then he's satisfied. Do you satisfied. feel like only a, a dim-witted fool would fall from this to his death? Do you have any dim-witted uh, fools among you? I am well, a dim-witted fool. Yes. <laughs> We're all dimwits. We couldn't find a wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. So, I'm going to cross first, I guess. Okay. Uh, make a acrobatics check with advantage for the stability of this sturdy acrobatics. construction. Yes. Easy. You uh, kind of hold your shield in one hand in your warhammer, is it? Warhammer, yes. In the other, and you kind of do like a little tightrope walker wiggle and get to the other side. Not a problem. All right. It seems very strong, very sturdy. Can I Jowdy, see salty, what's ahead solid wood. from here? Um, yes. You can see that the path, the, this, this cave tunnel crack, continues on. About, about wide enough for, um, like, someone to get through. It doesn't look too rough. Okay. Um, do you go down it, or are you waiting for everyone else to cross? I'm, I'm going to wait for everybody to cross, but slightly ahead, so they have some room to actually get on this side. Okay, who next? Oh, okay. Lynn. Lynn, you, you cross it. There's a slight wobble, but you're fine. Easy. Easy. It's not Maybe we next? should have used some kind of rope to anchor us to. Well, happens. Um, so do you? Do you pass no. a rope to the next person? I've already passed across oh. then with my, my rope. And my, I rope didn't was, my rope was deployed earlier. To get down here, yeah. I guess. Alright. I'll just. Well, Ooh, that's Ooh. Yeah, it's easy. You're over. It's fine. Not a problem. Now only one of you stands on the other side. The You're not afraid of heights. <laughs> I think the tallest, yeah. So you, you pass over this, and as you like walk across it, you have this like vertigo moment where you look down and you just see these big pointy stalagmites that look like spikes jutting out of the bottom of it, just sticking up skyward, and then... Oh, wait. No, you're on the other side. Oh, that was quick. It's only a couple steps. Oh, oh yep. No problem. You're all on the all other right. side. You can see the, the chasm kind of continuing onward. Uh, we leave the board here for... Yeah, for when we get yeah. back. Okay. You all pick up the board. Suddenly an orc charges at you. <laughs> yeah, actually, if we move it... Maybe we should move it, like, onto solid ground, in case, like... Ooh. Okay, pu so pull it towards our side? Make sure yeah, it's... So then when we get back, we can push it back. Okay, okay, I agree with that. Okay. So you, you pull the board, um, so it's not, like, resting over the chasm, and it's nice and solidly on your side. It's all, it's all easily said and easily done. There's not a problem with it. It's a bit heavy and cumbersome, but no real problem, except for the fact it won't let me grab you. 
let me grab you. Oh, That's... fiddle fosh. Anyway, um, yeah, it's it's over. So, um, then what? Um, I'm assuming that one of you lights a torch, so um, Rakus isn't the only person looking. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, torch flares into bright light. Cast yeah. a shadowy uh, glow down the um, chasm. It's all well and good. So, who's pressing on? You didn't come here so, to just stand on the other side. First, time, I'm going on the front, and I'm gonna proceed. See what's ahead. Uh, I think it should go. Rakust. Uh, it could go Cressic, Lynn, then Andy. Would that work? Or that's fine. That's that fine. Let's let's do that. So, uh, right. Rakust, do you have okay. investigation? I have investigation. Do you? Uh, oh, you, you mean proficient? proficient? Oh, uh, no, not okay. proficient. Uh, can you give me an intelligence statement for everyone? Just a simple intelligence. Just simple intelligence statement. Right? So. One D twenty minus one. Yeah, easy peasy. So you're walking along, you know, just cautiously creeping forward, and then you see like just uh, the cavern like opening up, and it looks very nondescript. But you can see underneath you, the the rock and rubble isn't like solid rock. It's more like scree, and it slopes very gradually, very innocently down. But you can tell your dwarven. Your dwarven senses tell you that if you were to plant a heavy boot on that in haste, you would slip and slide and fall down. It doesn't slope very sharply, but you would probably get a bit of a bruising if you weren't careful. And you're quite okay. glad you spotted that. And um, you can see it widening up as it goes further down. And you can also um, see that it, round to the left, it curves into another path. So I tell a party of this, obviously, so they don't fall. Alright. Well, some of us still have rope, right? So we could, while it does only slope a little bit, we still could fall. You could, um, you know, tumble and take a bit of a beating. Yeah. So, I mean, one of you could break your neck, but that would be unfortunate. Can we use some rope to kind of help each other get down, to get a bit of... Certainly. Stability. Um, there are, you know, sturdy stalagmites at the top that you could like tie a rope around and just like kind of hold on to it and go down. Or one of you could stand at the top with a rope. It's all Glad very valid. Got some rope. I used mine, so cool. yeah, yeah, it can be anyone. This time, it can be Cressix. Cressix got some rope on his um, explorer's pack, so. Okay, so are you holding on to it, or are you just like uh, wrapping it around a stalagmite? I think he'll. I think he'll tie it around, because he wants to use it as well. Okay. Um, so you all going down then? Um, Rakust leading the way, I assume? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if you could, please make... Hmm. Acrobatics or athletics checks with advantage. Depending okay. on if you're relying on holding on the rope, or whether you're relying on your footing. I'm relying on the footing, so I'll make an acrobatics... Right? Yeah. yeah. Acrobatics. Cool, cool. All is good, all is good. Ooh. Okay, okay. So, um, who's leading the way? Is it Rakust? Yeah, I'm going ahead. And then followed by... Cressic. It was Yeah, it was Cressic, then Lynn, okay. and Andy so, in the back. Cressic, could you please make a dexterity saving throw? Um, Rakust, you like climb down the rope, you know, holding on to it, and for a moment you think that your heavy boot is like slipping, but you grab the rope and you're okay, and you get to the bottom, and you're, you're safe. And then you see Cressic grab around the rope, and he begins coming down, and you see the like scree, the loose rock, like give way underneath his feet, and he like grabs onto the rope, and it just like goes rope burn through his gauntlets or his gloves or whatever he has on his hands, and Cressic, you windmill your arms. And you feel this like lurch as you begin to fall, and then you hit the ground like on your back, and you kind of just like bumpily slide down the um, the scree, and you get get to the bottom with a kind of clunk, and you feel rather battered and bruised, but not too bad. You take uh, four points of bludgeoning damage as you like. Ouch. 
Um, so the dexterity save was versus half. So seven, half, 3.5, rounded up four. Um, Lynn and Scarlet, you all managed to get to the, the bottom of the street after Rakust and Kresik with no further incident. It's easy. Only a simpleton would slip and tumble. With so many advantages weighed in their favour. Um, you can see the cavern extends and becomes a, a bit larger uh, ahead of you. Um, duh, 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 duh. Let's see. Uh, GM checks and it's like hum. Okay. Okay. So the cavern narrows slightly, like so, and then kind of bulges, and you can see it opening out into a, a bigger cavern beyond. Um, you can see this path leads back a ways and begins to narrow. So do you, do you, you press on around the corner? Yes. Okay, so pressing on around the corner, you, you see it like, as I say, it opens out into a... a oh, girl. Boop. Opens up into a, a larger a cavern. <laughs> kind of circular like that, and it's just filled with like stalactites hanging from the ceiling. Some of which are like so large they begin to touch the stalagmites, and so it like makes a little like corridor-like yep. maze where the tallest among you have to move between the the stalactites. Um, so yeah. Um, so you're currently just standing at the, the entrance of that, and as far as you can tell, it's just a cavern. Let's go in and look around. Okay. So yeah. who presses forth? Uh, I'm going for it, I guess. Okay. So can I have a perception and an investigation check from you? Let me let me just check that before you roll. Um, yes. A. No, just two perceptions. Just two perceptions. Okay. Perception one, perception two. Okay, okay, okay. Boop, 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 boop. And la, 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 la. Sorry, that's probably marching band uh, tapes. Dum, 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 dum. Cool. So you, you press on in, being nice and cautious. And as you move in, you don't see anything in particular. You can just see this like forest of, of stalactites hanging down from the ceiling. Is but the smell you, of vinegar stronger? As you like, as you think that, you flare your nostrils, and no, you, you can't smell vinegar. You can smell almost smells like sulfur, like like. Or burning, and as you kind of like smell, you look around for the scent, and you see something just drop from the ceiling. It looks almost like a giant glob of um, liquid, but it's this bright yellow sulfuric color, and it just globs on the, the floor. And as you like spot it, you step back, and it just slams down where you were. You can just see oh. the, the ground cracking and breaking. Um, could everyone please uh, roll initiative? You have found a monster! Besides the skeletons. Excellent. Uh, so and it's while... running past our decks. Yeah. Uh, while you do this, I'm going oh. to give you oh. a token. Like, I'm going to give you a token. Because that's what everyone's like. The Coost, Andromeda, Lynn, and um, Krasik. And. Lord. It's Carl. Carl. <laughs> C R C A R L. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. Um, so, that's uh, Rakus. Yeah, yeah, Rakus. Yeah. You're like entering in, and this thing like drops yeah. down in front of you. Um, could uh, the rest of you all just kind of point with a ruler where you want to be? Uh, so Somewhere I'm the, the I'm here by default, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Krasik's okay where he is. 
Okay, and Len and Andromeda. Uh, Scarlet, you want to be there? Cool. And Len, you happy where you are? Was that a nod? Okay, cool. Um, so the bits where there are stalactites hanging down, they are difficult terrain for anyone that isn't um, racoust because the stalactites are coming down. So that's any any square which partially has a grey line that is a downward V on it. It's difficult terrain. Okay, except from Resic because dwarf. Okay. Um. What and does that mean for movement? Is it uh, double the movement or? Movement is halved. You can also make advantage of this to uh, give yourself cover, although it won't help you against an amorphous blob because it'll just kind of surge around it. But in a separate situation, it might help you, but not this one. So when it fa fell, it made it dissolved the the place in front of me. Um, did everybody see this, or did I just see no, this? No, no. When it lands in front of you, everybody sees it. Like. Okay. It's it's like ten foot across this massive bright yellow sulfuric glob. As the torchlight shines on it, it glimmers and it begins to surge towards you. Boo ba doo boo boo doo 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 Lynn. And Okay. So it has a whopping initiative of twenty eight. Um, so, anyone beat a 28? Mm, no. Excellent. So, Cressic, what's your initiative? 13. 13. Andromeda is... 13? Uh, that's it. It's right. but it's the same mod. Um, Rakust, 5. Lin, 12. Cool. And sort descending. Puts where the camera can see it. Zoom in, scroll over, roll up, uh, check thing, okay, cool, and maybe zoom out a bit, Ta -dum -dum -dum. and how's that looking? Mm, I could just put that there. Yeah, that works. Okay, so Andromeda, you see this thing like just slam down it like cracks up the the stalagmites on the ground as it lands and it's just this big bright yellow sulfuric blob should step back i'm already back but the rest of them should step back especially if it's coming towards us hmm. okay so are you wanting to step back somewhere to a particular spot Maybe back that way. Oop. Okay. Safe. And you take any action? No. You're a horrible fighter. Cressic! What do you do? Um, okay. So let me just check something here. Because I'm currently down for health. You are indeed. You got beat um, up a bit. You are greatly wounded and fast approaching your own demise. You can feel your neck wishing it had been broken in the slippery fall. Then perhaps your companions would have carried you up and buried you. But now okay. you're going to be... Sorry, carry on. I'm going to... Because um, you can split your movement between actions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can... Yep, do that. Most so certainly. I can move and then... So if I move a little bit... Cool. Uh, bear in mind, it, uh, like it's got this squares. It triggers squares. an attack of opportunity. Yep. That's oh, yeah. Spot on, mm -hmm. Unless you take the disengage action. Alright, in which case, then I will not I will not move. I will just use my lay on hands. So in case she... Cool. So... Do, 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 do. I can basically uh, heal. Yep, you give yourself four hit points. Yeah. Um, and then that's basically it. I can't actually do anything because that counts as an action. Cool. So, um, Lynn, it's up to you. You see... Oh, actually, Cressic, what does this look like when you lay on hands? Do you touch yourself or is this just like a holy glow? <laughs> you touch yourself. <laughs> Everyone. Every time, man. Every time. We're all children. 
Sorry. So um, what's this look like? I think, yeah, I think he puts his, like, because obviously he wasn't really hurt anywhere specific. He was just sort of, like, beat up a bit. I think he just sort of, like, waves his hand, like, over his torso and a slight, like, I think a slight, like, red orangey glow like comes from his hands and then like before you know it maybe he had like a bruise on his like like head where he like, so, like fell this, comic, this comic bump on your head just goes hmm. yeah exactly like a reverse cartoon of Tom and Jerry yeah and then he's back to fighting shape okie dokes so Lynn what do you do when you see this sulfuric yellow blob cascade from the ceiling, attempting to surprise? Um... Oh, I definitely move forward. Um, you move forward let's to... see. Um, if I go here, can I hit him, or do, you need, do yeah, I need yeah, to go you here? Can hit him from diagonals. It's okay. uh, well, let's this let's do that then. This thing is an amorphous giant blob, so you're pretty much in the clear. I wouldn't worry. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, squash him, or at least start the process. Okay, go for it. Uh, ooh, maybe not. Okay, so you slam your warhammer into this blob, and, like, it ripples comically, and then there's, like, this <coughs> on the other side of it, and you just see, like, this, this globule be forced out of it, and it quickly solidifies, like, into a dried clump, hits a stalactite, and shatters and crumbles. And you can see this, this blob just go... Mm. It, gets a bit smaller. It's, it's pretty hard to tell, really, but you think you did something. Maybe. Maybe. Um, maybe he did. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. And that's you. Yeah. Rakust. You are not surprised by this gigantic yellow abomination. It's massive. Uh, Does no one look up? Does it think you're an idiot? Oh, of course not. What do you do, dwarf? Well, I guess I'm going to attack it, since I expected... Another thing. Okay, so Rakus, you like bring up your massive basher and you slam your warhammer into this thing and it just goes bloom, bloom, and like this little spray comes out the back of it like almost looks like it farted. Maybe it passed wind and it goes bloom, back at you. <coughs> Lot of rain. <laughs> yeah, someone's got static. Um, okay. And the blob attacks. Uh, Cressic. Ouch. By the way, uh, I have a protective fighting sense, so I impose this advantage. On his attack. Um, I Wonderful. do not believe that is true. Um, I... Yes, Wait. it is. I have it as well. When a creature c you can see attacks a target other than you, that is dot, within dot, five dot. feet of you. Dot, dot, dot. Other than you. Oh. It's attacking it, you. Cressic, yeah. right? Cressic. I'm Rakust. I have it? I'm Rakust. He's attacking Cressic, right? Oh, yeah. So? Oh, I was well, right. I'm an idiot. So you impose your shield between it. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, so you like thrust your shield in it, forming a shield wall before this monstrous abomination, and it's like, <laughs> it sounds a bit disappointed. Like it's like, oh, I don't get to squish you. <laughs> no, he gets, but his advantage. Almost critical. Almost critical. So like, it lunges forward with um, its entire body, and like this. This almost tongue-like yellow um, protrusion comes from it, and it like laps against uh, your shield, um, uh, Rakust, and it just goes like, gloop. and where it like licks your shield, you just like smell this sulfurous stench forcing its way up your nostrils, and then it's Andromeda's turn. What do you do? Uh, you're muted. We, we can't hear you. So she should move forward now, I think, because everyone's had their turn attacking it. Okay, you... Well, it'd be useful if you got involved in the hitting. Um, you, you After wanna... everyone's had their turn. Wait, do you want to go here? 
where that's you can fine. get to it. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Cool. Cool. There. We need to spell Carl. You've got to reshuffle oh, those levers, around. man. Okay. Nah, I'm kidding. And once you uh, close the distance to this galoop, what do you do? Use my hand axes. There you go. Okay. Wait, are you going to use both? Okay. Um, you can make a second attack as a bonus action if you so wish. Uh, so if you click it again. And do you have any two weapon fighting feet? No, you don't, because you've got the perception thing. Cool. Uh, so the second attack only does two damage, not not uh, five, because it doesn't include your strength bonus. But you do uh, five and two. So what you see is the following. Okay. Jordan, I like it. Uh, and that's. So what you see is the, the following. Like, you cut into it, and you, like, carve a line straight through it, like slicing into jelly, and it just separates. And as you bring your second axe down, it separates again, and it just, like, goes galoop, galoop. Uh, uh oh. And it just, like, splits into smaller, smaller blobs. And there are now three of these, like, smaller blobs. Each is about the size of a, a big dog. And they just go gloop, gloop. And you see them, like, kind of jiggle at each other. And go gloop, gloop. And then they just go gloop. And they surge forward. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. So, uh, excellent. The third galoop attacks someone. It appears slashing weapons aren't a good idea. That does seem true. So, Kresik, perhaps with the intent of the original creature, this blob, amorphous, yellow, sulfuric, stinking thing, attacks you. Does the I impose my shield. You can't this impose isn't... your shield twice. But that's the first time I did it. Last oh, time it was like it was it was was two, two where fighters. Where, oh, where does wonderful. it say we need to take a rest before using it again? Just wondering. Um, Maybe find it. That's an error. I no, just once a round, I think. Yeah, it's once it's a, a reaction. Yeah. So you can just react oh. one time. Okay. So, um, Lynn, you interpose your shield between uh, Kresik and this blob, and it goes... <laughs> and it just, like, reaches out with a little tongue, and you manage to negate a critical again, and it just goes... <laughs> and lashes out at Kresik. Lovingly licking the alliteration. Gotta love it. Uh, and the second one attacks... Kresik. So, Kresik... I think this time, no one's going to defend you. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Ah, Hopefully it's not a crit a again. Dun dun. Ah, oh, so what you see is this thing just goes glue, and it like reaches out with the tongue, and then the tongue separates into like five more tongues, and then each of them separate out into five more tongues, and by the time they get to you, it's like a feather just caressing you. It's like, huh? <laughs> ah, there you are! And it just like suddenly retracts back into it. Um, so, Kresik, you now get a reaction. What's, what's, okay. what's your response to this? Well, I, I noticed that slashing weapons seem to just separate them, and I think even more of these would be just more annoying. Uh, so, I'll use my mace. 
Um, so um, previously, had you been holding your your greatsword, or were you considering pulling your greatsword out? I think I was considering it because I think Cressic's like default exploring is like the shield on his arm. And I think he realized that like slashing is bad. So there was like, there a moment where he was like holding his mace and he was like, I need something bigger. And then he just sees that like a pair of tiny hand axes slice this thing into a multitude. His hand probably like reached for it and then he saw them like split and he's just like, nope. Nope. Uh, yep. Um, so I'll just, you know, hit it with my mace. Go for it. Wait, actually. Uh, which one? Blob one, two or three? Yeah, give me give me a second here. Let me check the wording on something. Great weapon master. It doesn't say it has to be on a on a great on an actual great weapon. It should say that it, See, has it should to be, it, it probably um, with a melee weapon that you are wielding with two hands. Uh, specifically, the intent is to mean that you have to be required. Uh, you have to be holding oh, a, either a versatile or two-handed weapon. Although it doesn't specify that in the wording, that's the intent. That's what it wants. Yeah, that to makes have. sense. That makes sense. Like, oh, for example, right, if you were wielding a right. longsword two-handed, you could use it then. I was wondering. All right, I'll just hit it regular then. Oh, regular hit. Such a shame. I know, right? Which one? I'll hit, uh, I don't know, three, I guess, because it's right there. Okay. So you, like, slam your mace into it, and it, like, ripples, and then out the back there's just, like, a of like this yellow spray splatters against some stalagmites and quickly uh, hardens and cracks. Andromeda, what do you do? I only have slashing weapons, so just give it another slash. Just slash them into so tiny bits that they'll just like bouncing against you okay. and they can't do anything. So are you attacking one or two? One. Okay. Uh, let me check something real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In so, before we're fighting 50. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring your sword down against this thing, and you like, was it one you said? One. Okay, you slice off a chunk of this thing, and you see it, like, slam against um, a stalagmite sprouting from the, the cave, and it begins to, like, go, like, like it's about to, like, form into a, another kind of blob, and it's, like, really small. It's about the size of your, your head, maybe, and it just, like, as it pulls itself together, it just, like, pops, like a, like a, like a bubble, and it, like, implodes, and then just, like, turns solid all of a sudden, like this... Um, uh, like you froze in a bubble. Uh, the the one that you attacked, number one, is still there, although greatly diminished, and it just goes. Blue, blue, blue. Lynn, what do you do? Uh, I attack blob number three with my warhammer. No, not blob number three. You slam no, your warhammer into it. You slam your warhammer into the blob, and it goes. And. It ripples back, and then it ripples back forward, and your warhammer just like goes and bounces off. <laughs> well, that <laughs> Rakus, didn't do, do a lot. Uh, you're you're muted, by the way, Rakus. Sorry, I'm attacking blob number three. Blob number three, you slam your warhammer into it, and it just like goes. And then there's just like splattered chunks of this yellow blob. You get a bit on your shield and it quickly hardens and becomes brittle and shatters and breaks off. It is no more. Blob 3 is deceased. It is an X blob. It is gone. However, the remaining blobs are very happy to attack whatever is presented before them. Galoop. Okay, so Rakus, you're being yeah. attacked. By right. the blob. Um, do, 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 do. I believe, uh, Kresik, do you have protection? No, he doesn't. No, you have a great weapon. Andromeda, do you have protection? No, I think it's just me and. Lynn. No, I don't think so. Just, just Rakust and Lin, then. Okay, so, Rakust, you are attacked. Defend yourself with 
an armor class that is higher than what I'm about to roll. Ooh, it you succeeds. Hit. I am hit. So, Rakust, this thing, like, reaches out with its, like, diminished tongue and, like, goes... And you feel it slam against you. And when you saw it, like, lick at other people, it felt... It felt like it would be, like, a, a gentle touch. But it, like, slams against you and you just feel the shattering impact against your shoulder. You take nine points of bludgeoning damage and then All you right. begin to smell not this sulfuric scent, but this vinegary, sharp stench. And you take, on top of that damage, one point of acid damage for a total of ten. Okay. What's your health? My max health is 15, so I'm at five. Cool. Wait, do, 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 do. I fucked up. Okay, cool. that's correct. And the second blob also lunges forth with its tongue. At Kreshek. Um Do either Rakust or Lin impose disadvantage on it? Lin does. I'm so protected right now. Okay, so. You should have switched with Lin. <laughs> Kresik, this. Ooh. Kresik, this thing, like, reaches out with its tongue, and you see um, Lin interpose her shield, and the thing just slams its tongue against the shield and over the top of it, and then slaps you uh, with its tongue in like this, this lick across your chest, and you can see your skin beneath your armor beginning to bubble, and your ribs feel as though like a, a cow has just sat atop you. Uh, so you also take um, damage. Uh, uh, ten bludgeoning, and six acid. For 16. That's What's rip. your max HP? Rip, guys. Crescent. 11 is my max HP. Okay, so you'll just drop down. You are zero. Zero, oh zero. You, you just fall to the ground. You're like, gloop, plump, and you're down. Uh, Cressic, it's your turn and you're on zero. Could you make a death saving throw, please? And don't fail, because these things might just attack you when you're on the ground. I'll, I'll try not to fail. Um, oh, it would be good to have a first player death, but I'm not rooting for it. Ooh. So, Kresik, um, yeah. Rip. One, one death failure. Nice, uh, you, death. You've got two more before you die. Just pointing out, a melee attack counts as a critical, which is two failed death states. But if, moving if on. I act right now, I'm, I'm dead. Moving on. Andromeda, what do you do? Attack. Good choice. Which one? That's all I've got. Number one, go for it. Roll up your attack. Slice this thing into a thousand more pieces. Come on. You guys can just murder it. Okay, so you slice this blob, and again a chunk flies off it, slaps against uh, the stalagmites sprouting from the ground, and for a moment it seems like it's going to form into another blob, and then it like is too small, shrinks, and pops, and solidifies into this like weird pustule. But the um, tiny blob that remains after your attack, though small and gloopy, is still intact. Lynn, what do you do? Uh, I move into the square next to blob 2. Blob? And there, and I try to hit it. You swing your mighty warhammer down upon it, and it slams into it with a satisfying squish, and like it like pounds it into the ground, and all from underneath it you see like this yellow pus oozing out and turning into like solid brittle dust and just going and as your warhammer bounces back you can see it's still there Rakust dear All right. Uh, well, one moment yes. can I as a bonus action try to push it away from me? with your shield yes you may yes. I, I would like I was, to do that I was going to try and do that as well So, um, <laughs> would you like to make a is it an athletics opposed by a uh, yes. Do, 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 do. Let's Shield have a master. look at that. Yeah, uh, you can try to bonus action shove it five feet with your shield, which is just combat as the rules. Which is, yeah, it's athletics opposed by athletics, I'm going to say. Uh, the answer is... Yeah. Yeah, strength athletics opposed by strength athletics. 
Okay, so 21. Yeah, this this thing resists and bloops at you. It goes bloop. Uh, let's see what it rolls. Uh, it rolls. 19. Okay, good. So, do you want to push it uh, back here or back here? Back here. Okay, it goes bloop. Do you follow Perfect. it? I don't think it can I? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't moved so long. Then I'd like to move forward here. Chris, you're safe yeah. for now. For now. Shield wall saves you. So what you see is, like, uh, Lynn, as this thing licks over your shield and slaps Kresik and it falls to the ground, you, like, step up, slam into this thing and bash it back with your shield. And it's like this bouncy, springy, basketball-type deal. It just goes bloop, blop, 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 blop. And that's um, your go. Rakust? Yeah, your go? Yes, Rakust. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just check something. You know you want to go galoop, galoop. So I'm going to attack it. Go for it. Blob one. Uh, weapon attack. So you slam nice. your Warhammer into Blob One, and it like pounds into the ground and goes, Gloof! and it's no more. It just like disintegrates into this dry, brittle, yellow gook. Also, as a bonus section, I'd like to use a Second Wind that gives me health. Go All for right. it. Give yourself some HP. So. D10 plus one. Plus one. Yeah, plus your fighter level. Unless oh, I'm wrong, but uh, for I, this I, case, I... I'll just let you have it. It's 11. Okay, so it's a 6. Cool. So, Rakust, you dig deep, smashing this thing, and you feel your second wind come upon you as this thing's last wind passes. Ha -ha. So, I gain 6 health. Yep, drop to 11. Relatively safe. Okay. And. Oh, it's dead. Aha! Blob 2! Hmm, who does it attack? Lynn. Um, Rakus, do you interpose your shield to protect Lynn? Do you like yes, step of up course. and defend her? Yeah. Okay. So, Lynn, this this tiny little blob hanging on for dear life, it reaches out to you with a tongue. It's like gloop gloop gloop, and you just like step back a, uh, a split step, and Rakus's shield comes up behind you, and this thing just like goes bloop against it. Uh, Kresik, another death saving throw, if you would. Okay, well, this one could kill me. Only if you roll no. a 1, and that's like 5% chance. No yeah, exactly. So I can use my inspiration. It is a death saving throw, so yes. To give me advantage. So you can roll two death saving throws and pick the more advantageous one. Good for it. Yeah. At the point, um, inspiration doesn't carry over from session to session. So yeah, yeah. We if know. you have it, use it. Okay, can you get a 20? Oh, no. Yep, nope. So one success. You're, you're alive for today. You're alive. Andromeda, what do you do? Thank you, Randy. Attack the final blob. Okay, you step up and swing your sword upon it. Go for it. Yeah. Okie dokes. So you swing your sword down into the blob and it splatters apart, little chunky <laughs> giblets spraying out across the room. And you can see them all like beginning to form back into a uh, bigger blobs and they just begin to like go, Aha! We are alive! And then they go, ploop, 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 and disintegrate. Uh, combat is over, however, since death is on the table, Lynn, what do you do? Uh, can anything I do if I try uh, to stabilize him with medicine, can that can it make it worse? Or do I just uh, fail to, to stabilize? I don't think so. I mean... Let's give it a try. If you roll a 1, I probably won't do anything because it's not in the rules. So you're okay. pretty safe. But I can use uh, my inspiration to try to make it a better roll. Yeah, you can use your inspiration to give yeah. you advantage. Let's do that. Should I... I'm not... I'm not uh, uh, proficient in medicine, but if I press it, it's, it won't. It will make it uh, the correct roll anyway, it right? It should. It should. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you like run over to him and you're like, ah, bandage the wound. Um, there is no wound. He's just and I, crushed. And I, have, and I have nothing to bandage with. This is a catastrophe. Like, 
so acid so you, seizures. You look down at Kresik and you can just see like bruising all over his ribs. His armor is like beginning to like rust slightly, and there's like just these blotchy patches where you can see his skin where it's bubbling. Does anyone know what to do? Krakus steps up, and he tries his luck with his inspiration. <laughs> God damn it! We're not very smart. So you look at him in horror, and you're like, um, uh. You look to Lynn, Lynn looks to you. Uh, look at your shield. Lynn looks at her shield, and you're like, well, fuck. Cressic. In the meantime, while your erstwhile colleagues find a way to treat you, do you die? Let's let's see. Oh, good. It's a success. You're okay. You're okay. Astrometer. What do you do? What do I do? Save me. Nothing. Oh, no. so You're so heartless. So, um, could you describe how this nothing looks? She's just, he's just gonna stand there and watch it all happen. So, Andromeda just turns around, the long braid flicking in the, the cavern, and you see Lynn and Rakust like staring in abject horror at Kresik's bubbling skin. Rakust, what yeah. do you do? If I survive was... this, I'm keeping scars from this um, encounter. I I'm haven't done it yet. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn didn't do. I have oh, a... It skipped you for some reason. Weird. Yes. Lynn, what do you do? Sorry. Uh, Sorry Lynn. I uh, you take have to keep water an eye on and, and, and try to uh, wipe away some of the acid okay. and see if that helps. Mm. So you like begin wiping and scrubbing, and as you scrub and wipe, you your hands begin to burn and tingle, but not overly. And you notice Cressic's breathing begins to become more natural and even. He's stable. Excellent. Woohoo! <laughs> we have survived! So, no the immediate danger now over. Um, Andromeda, it appears that Kresik will live. Lynn did <laughs> something with her hands and he's, he's going to be fine. Right. Cool. So, uh, Kresik, could you please roll a d4 for how many hours you're going to be unconscious? Ah, uh, that's good. Back up in fighting shape. Okay, so <laughs> the rest of you, Andromeda, Rakus, Lin, what do you do? This this gelatinous abomination is gone. What do you do? Okay. You're, you're standing in a around. cavern. It's heavy and thick with stalactites and stalagmites. The air stinks of burnt flesh. This stale vinegar and sulfur, like you're in the pits of hell itself. Well, we can start by moving uh, Kresik a bit up the tunnel, so it's not in the worst sulfurous smell, and then have a look around while he recuperates, I guess. Okay. I'd stay around Kresik, make sure nothing comes around and strikes him on his okay. slumber. Andromeda? Can I have a look around with Lynn? Okay. So, uh, Andromeda and Lynn, can you both roll a d20? Uh-huh. Uh, can you both roll a d20 again? Okay, so, as you're looking around Andromeda, you see a, um cavern, the uh, tunnel, extending uh, further down, and it's hidden behind some, like, stalagmites that are cropping out from the um, ground, so you have to kind of peer behind it, and it's quite tight, uh, maybe wide enough for you to go shoulder by shoulder, not so jagged that you would tear yourself, but not so wide that you would have a comfortable time, and it's just, like, obscured behind some stalagmites uh, that stick out of the, the ground. I can have a look in it, try and get my head through it. That's probably as well, much as I could get. Okay, so um, give me a dexterity uh, save. Time for the comic, like, head stuck in, like, the tight space of, like... As a, as a you know, 
ooze just rolls down. So um, you like press your head in and you begin wiggling and you can feel your shoulders beginning to slide in as well. It's not as tight as you thought. Um, you can see far enough to see that it terminates in a small room about um, 10 feet around um, and you can see something looks wooden with glass on top but it's quite hard um, as the torch is being currently held by someone else and you, the torch light is glimmering around but you can see the like reflect uh, the reflect la, 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 the refraction off something like glass there's definitely something in there can try and still go in and see okay so you Which press on it? further uh, pressing in can you give me a perception test um. Ooh, can you give me a dexterity saving throw? Okay, that's okay. Um, so you stumble in, and as you like get to the edge of the bit where it's really tight, you have to give it another push to get into the room. And as you do so, you stumble forward and you see a hole right in the center of the room just dropping down into the earth. And you have to like reach out, and your hands shoot forward as you tumble uh, headfirst into this hole. And your hands grab hold of a wooden table that's on the other side of this this hole and you hear the rattle of glass where atop it and as you look up uh, you can see uh, that the table is filled with uh, small vials and um, alchemical reagents and things of that ilk you can see like little pots and urns little uh, Tupperware not Tupperware um, ceramic and uh, pottery uh, jars and this this hole that you're like now kind of stretched over just spout the, your shoulder whipped across and it just drops and you can't see as, as the torch is who has the torch by the way is it Lynn or Rakust it's, I think Krasik had it so or it's probably it, fallen uh, okay. so it's probably sputtering on the ground of the large cavern uh, do I hear anything I mean a scream or something or a reaction uh, Andromeda do you do you let out a shriek as you tumble forward nope. or is it stone face stone face definitely okay. so uh, can you give a perception test Lynn Uh, you hear the the clutter like of glasses clicking together, like the like there's a table with bottles on it and it's been shaken. Uh, and you can't I, see Andromeda; she's she's gone. I go get the torch, and at the same time, I call out, "Is everything all right?" It's fine. <laughs> okay. It comes from somewhere in the wall. It's as though she's disappeared into the rock face itself. So I go towards there, but in a rather um, careful or, or a slow walk, because I don't know that I would need to hurry. Okay, so um, you find behind the stalagmites the same entrance that she, she's found, and you find the same room that she's found after a while. So Andromeda, do you do anything before Lynn arrives, or are you just waiting for Lynn to get there? Try and get as much upright as possible. So, yeah, I think you managed to regain your composure and you're, you're standing nonchalantly, your braid, like, down to your knees behind Have your a back. look at the vials, see what's on the table, see if I can recognise anything. Okay. Um, are you proficient in alchemist tools? Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. You look around and you see pots and vials and oils and potions and you don't see anything immediately that jumps out as magical or uh, great. Um, a lot of this stuff, you don't understand what it is. But there's one thing you do know. Money. This stuff is valuable. If you carted this up and took it back to town, you could fetch a hefty sum. These reagents and vials must be worth some gold. And the tools themselves, the almanac, the calcinator, mortar and pestle, uh, distillation equipment, etc., etc., is worth a hefty sum as well. Not exactly the sort of thing that's easy to throw in a backpack, but you could 
uh, carry it if you um, were careful enough. You know that uh, alchemists' tools are 50 gold for a set. And the reagents, you have no way of knowing their worth. Could I put some into my satchel? Yep. Or pack? Yeah, do you just want to like grab up the, the small yeah. important looking Whatever's not going to leak. Lint? Okay, are you trying to hide this from Lynn? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, roll a d6. Such a mercenary. Okay, so you you managed to get like uh, a couple of things into your pack. Later, when it comes time to divide up loot, remind me you rolled a four. So um, you like bundle these things into your backpack, and Lynn squeezes through, and you you see Andromeda standing there, like nonchalant, like looking at stuff. What you do can you see find? a uh, like five to ten feet wide cavern with a hole mm. dropping down into the earth and a small table with alchemist tools and uh, curious reagents in little pots. Uh, what did you find? Nothing important, just potions and oils and tools. Nothing okay. that's worth much. Um, I don't know this person very well, so I would probably at least try to do an inside check. Um, give me an intelligence saving throw. Okay. Saving throw? Yeah. I mean, if you've got proficiency in intelligence, then... Yeah, no, no, happy. but... but uh, It'll just be a check, I know. It's all good. Yeah, okay. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you look at it and you see a bunch of worthless glassware. Maybe 10 silver oh, uh, if you sell I'm, it to a barkeep. I'm not wondering about the worth of it. I'm wondering if she has taken anything. So I want to uh, uh, see if she's telling me the truth. Oh, right. Uh, so that's why I was talking about insight. Hmm. Lie I detection. Wonder. You just said that it's all worthless, so and she believes that. Um, make an insight check versus a bluff check. Uh, so deception. Andromeda roll deception with advantage because Lynn believes it's worthless. Lynn, roll insight. Deception, did you say? Yep. Cool. So yeah, like it's, it's very worthless fooled. junk, and you don't think she's taking it. Oh well, anything. what a pity. Let's take it anyway. Who knows? Cool. So the pair of you begin bundling it up, I assume, or do you um, try and convince her further not to take it? I think it's best if we don't. We don't have room. How are we going to get across? <laughs> Bear in these? mind, if you don't have room, then. There's no way you can fit all this stuff in your backpack, so you won't be able to cart it home. Exactly. Only as much as I can fit in my pack, but she doesn't need to know that. Plus, okay, we have okay. to pick up Kresik. That's true, that's true. Anyway, so um, you, you put forward that it'll only take up space, Lynn. Uh, okay. Uh, do I believe that? Because that's uh, ridiculous. I can carry a lot. I mean... <laughs> I can it's, see it's an entire table worth of stuff. I mean, she makes yeah. a valid point. It's bulky and cumbersome, and you it's know it would be worth less than ten silver in total. But then again, it's the only thing of on, any worth that you yeah, found here. Yeah. On the other hand, ten silver compared to my total fortune is still actually quite a bit. That's like ten percent or something. <laughs> so look inside yourself, Lynn. What do you decide? I'll probably grab one or two things that doesn't look too cumbersome uh, and then I'll let her leave if she wants to. I mean, I, I don't mind. I can't force her to take anything more if she thinks they are too big. But I'm not going to take all the regions because I don't think they're worth anything. Okay, so you're just like grabbing up the, the tools and stuff. Ah. Uh -huh. I, I think you can pretty much grab all the important tools and get the alchemist supplies. Okay, so though you believe it to be worth 10 silver, it is worth more. 
Okay, and then you, you leave the... Ten it's not bad. And then you leave the large cavern area? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, the little... Ca okay, uh, so, so Lynn, uh, not Lynn, uh, Andromeda, Lynn leaves. All innocent. See if I can fit a few more items in my bag? Oh, okay, yes, certainly. Oh, wow. She took the biggest and cumbersomest items. She took the supplies. Oh, you don't need that. You can easily stuff all these reagents in your bag. Mm, never know. But you might make some handy. noise. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, make a uh, sleight of hand check. You, you manage to bundle the stuff up and put it in your bag. And when you when you look, there's nothing there but dry glassware and broken uh, crockery. You think you've got the lion's share of what you're pretty sure is uncountable riches. Should have made a rogue. So, um, what do you do then? Follow her out. Okay, so you follow her out. And the rest of you, you all meet up, and it's all uh, very happy. Uh, Rakus, you're standing guard over Kresik. Um, they they emerge. Is anything said? I asked uh, them, so, what did you find around you? Well, there was a small room with a hole in it, and Andromeda almost fell down. And, and uh, then you, there you was did, some... You didn't, you didn't see that, Lynn. I, no. She got up before I got in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, and then there was a table with a lot of bottles and stuff. But they were worthless. But there were some tools and stuff, and tools always look waste good. So I took the biggest ones and put them in my bag. Here. What look. was on, uh, in the hole? Did you check? No. It was a hole. It looked holy. Hmm. Didn't check how deep it was. No. If it went somewhere else. Okay. No idea. Uh, sin since we have Krasik here injured, I wouldn't suggest continuing on. I suggest mm. we head back. Agreed. Since you brought. Some loot, would you? Okay, um, Kresik, can you give me a uh, intelligence save? Wait, are you talking to me? Ah, uh, not Kresik. Uh, oh. Rakust. <laughs> Rakust! The intelligence! I'm ha, ha, ha. apart. Intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty the smart. supplies are, I mean, personally, you wouldn't even consider picking them up. These are the worth ten copper, and that's to an idiot. Perhaps you shouldn't say anything. Though. Maybe like somebody wants one hundred copper coins. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh, that that session, man. Anyway, um, so I I think that this is a good point to end it. Um, yeah. Cressic's gonna wake up in an hour, so you don't need to test for any randomness. So um, I'm assuming that you pass the hour with Cressic in the cavern. And then leave, or you carry him outside, then leave. Question, do you leave the, the wooden board across the chasm when you leave? Uh, or do you take it mm. with you? Bearing in mind this is an important question, and is actually loaded. We'll take it with us. Yes. There's no reason to waste things. I'm already lugging around half Wait. worthless stuff anyway. Am I like? Did you wait until I woke up and then we walked out? Or yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a awake, if not steady. Um, and we uh, take up the ropes as we go. Yeah, that too. Okay, so you, you collect up everything. Um, one of you mark down on your character sheet that you have a fifteen foot stout board of ooze pitering. So who wants to take it? <laughs> Want to roll for it? Uh, 1d4? Sure. Deciding? That, that's perfect. Just pick a number. Uh, or DM roll for us, I guess. That would be fair. Okay. Um, Walleco. Uh, who's that? Wall it's Rakus. Rakus the dwarf. Though you did not carry it in R, too tiny to lift it above your head with your meager <laughs> dwarven arms. It is you that they give it to, perhaps to serve as a tiny coffin for your skeleton when you die. <laughs> okay, so you all make it back to town in, in record time. It's all jolly good and happy and very, very um, warm and heartwarming. The money. Boy, are you in for a surprise when you walk up to the general store and attempt to sell these alchemist supplies. 
Do any of you want alchemist supplies as a point? I don't want. No. Cool. Zhao Di takes a look at them and goes, mm, it was room. 50? Sure, that sounds very good. Thinking, not saying, but thinking it's 50 silver, of course. Yeah, yeah. He slides 50 imperial, golden imperial <gasps> across the counter. Barely managing to, to keep in the reaction. Oh, is it too much? Um, no, that's 40, perfect. 40, that's 40, perfect. More divisible by four, surely. The, You've already slid it on the table. <laughs> and you they see him no like, man. laughing like it's a joke, but you can see a little tear in his eye, like, no, <laughs> He's like, ah, and it, it slides back across the table. So 50 uh, divided four ways mm -hmm. is 12 gold and 5 silver to all of you. Mark it down. And Andromeda, I'm assuming you're selling the rare reagents when everyone else is gone. Indeed. Okay. 200 gold. Deal. No. Put it down nice on your profit. Sheet. Nice profit. Rich. And write down somewhere dirty money. <laughs> the best kind of money. <laughs> Jesus, you could like I don't even know what you can do with two hundred. Okay, so the rest of the um joy is in experience. So, um, you fought two skeletons, uh, 50 each, and you fought a big blobby monster. Uh, this is divided by 50% for my bullshit, and then divided further by 4 to divide between you. Um, so that's... 70 from fighting monsters. If you if you wait, you'll get a running total of everything. So, you discovered a couple of locations. You discovered a ruined farmstead, uh, which is probably not worth that much for just finding it. Uh, but let's see... Mm, have I got a map available to help me out here? Six... Okay, thank you. Da -da 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 -da. It's worth 50. Um, you found the pit containing the creature. That is worth 100. Uh, there is the fortress, um, Fort Vigilance. Pretty sure that's also 100. Uh, let's see. Duh, 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 duh. GM has too many notes. Uh, are notes a good thing or a bad thing? Discuss. Um, depends what their notes on. Um, the uh, the fortress is worth a hundred, and there's two hundred for finding that this strange creature dwelled within the the pit, within the the cavern complex. Okay, so that's uh, 450 divided by 4. Um, so 70 plus 115. 185 experience each. 185. That means you're the both the highest earners. Cough, cough, Andromeda. And the most experienced players so far. Over half of oh, level yeah. two. Although we didn't encounter that much. That is true. That is true. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. So break down again. Two skeletons, one blob. Uh, finding the ruined farmstead. Finding uh, Fort Vigilance. Uh, finding the cavern complex. Learning that a blobby monster was within the cavern complex. Um, I think that's everything. So oh, we we finished somewhat the wagon mission because it's true. Mm, we that didn't true. actually find find so out you what didn't happened. Complete the main part, locating yes. it, but you yeah. did get rewarded for the objective of traveling to Fort Vigilance and returning. That does feel like I should reward you for it. Let's see. Say two fifty. Two fifty. Split four ways. 
185. Okay, so you should all be at 250. All right. Each Almost bit. level two, boys and girls. Okay. So, thank you all for playing. Um, right. Anything you want to say in parting? Any quote unquote shout outs <laughs> to our massive audience? I love Twitch chat. Please keep up, Kappa. <laughs> no, best. Okie dokes. Well, uh, I'll see you all again in a month or two. And uh, thank you all for playing. Thank you all, all right. for, for, for bearing the with the terrible yeah, the ordeal of travel. <laughs> so, um, have a good day. Farewell. And goodbye, stream. Yeah.